For Krimo Media's Policy, I'm Tabi Shomulikai, moderator and speaker, also known as Message Architect. Tami Ngadimengi joins me to unpack her book titled Finding Purpose. Your book offers your most valuable life lessons and ideas to help others live a meaningful life. So briefly, tell us about why after being in corporate for 20 years, you chose another direction of becoming a message architect. I don't think it was a, 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 an actual choice that I made. I'm a very spiritual person and I believe in God and I, I, I know that God wanted me to now maneuver into that direction. And I was starting to feel very uncomfortable in corporate and God has a way of making you feel uncomfortable in a space that you're not meant to be in. I mean, I was right at the top, you know, of my game in corporate, right money, right all the stuff that people want in corporate. But I would go to bed very unfulfilled and I was brave enough then to ask God to say, actually, what do you want me to do? And um, Bob's your uncle. If you've watched my TEDx talk from the, about the age of five, I mean, I used to roam around with my mom's underarm roll on. So my subconscious always knew that this is what I needed to become for the world. And Tammy, you say that you hope people learn from this book. What career lessons did you learn that you hope to pass on? So I think the biggest thing for me is don't chase money. Money flows. Um, also, uh, that, that money is a, a, false, a false promise. Um, a salary for me, I always thought, oh my gosh, I'm so secured. I have a salary. Mm -hmm. I earn far more <laughs> being the message architect. Um, yes, okay, maybe the security, there's a lot more work and there's a lot more risk involved, but it's worth it because now I go to bed with more money and fulfilled every night. So it's a false security. And from an early age, you clearly saw the bigger picture of your love for languages, drama, and bringing people together. Talk to us more on how these three things formed an important part of an impact you made in the world today. I have to give credit to my mom. I think my mom saw that I was good at these things and the importance of them before I even picked it up. And thank goodness she maneuvered me in my schooling career to where I needed to be maneuvered to. Drama is me. I will always, like, that's just who I am. In actual fact, if I had had a choice, I probably would have gone to university and studied drama. But my mom was like, not in this country, it's never going to work. But I don't be shocked if I land up on a movie someday because it's just in my natural sense. English um, was, I mean, ugh, I communicate with English uh, on most global stages, obviously other languages, but globally in English. And so um, English played quite an imperative role um, in terms of getting me to know how to also play around with words and the narrative because the message architect in, in, in herself and I say herself because she's within me is a person who breaks down and builds words if I didn't have the foundation of understanding the English language it would be very difficult to play that role and tell me you write that as you reflect on your life you realize that it had been teaching you the same lessons repeatedly and that you suffered until you were ready to accept the lesson so tell us about some of the lessons you learned in your previous relationships that you want people to learn from. We won't tell people how many times I've been married and engaged. I have to read the book to get that, but it's a lot of times. Um, and the biggest lesson I learned from that is I was trying to replace my dad. I had a gap that I felt uh, with my dad and so I was trying to replace a lot of things with my dad. And so I've come to now realize at an older age, marry for purpose, not for feelings. Feelings are, are temporary, so marry for purpose. And I'm happily married for purpose. I do love him, of course I do, but I'm married for purpose. And how was it taking your skeletons out of your closet to giving them a decent burial? And what reactions did you first get from the people when you came out? You know, so a part of the part of the reasons why I've also written the book is because um, this is my skeleton being taken out to be buried. I'm a public figure. I don't think it's a it's a secret. People know that I work with presidents, ministers, all these big brands globally, and. Um, I just, I, I started to look at the world and what the world does. As your star rises, they try to dig up things to almost make you imperfect in their eyes. And I'm very big on saying I'm imperfect. 
And so when I when I started speaking about my imperfections, that's when I kind of started to tell people what my imperfections are. And the book is exactly that as well, is to say, yes, my star is rising. I've spoken about all my rubbish in my book. What are you going to speak about now? Now I've given you the chance to just focus on my talents and my skills and my calling and my purpose. And don't try and dig up anything because I've dug it up for you. Please go read about it. And reactions? Um, it's been great reactions. I don't think we have a lot of people who are brave to actually tell these stories as they are. That's the thing. I really don't think so. I think we hear a lot of, I told my story. But if you if you read a lot of the stories, you can see they're a little bit varnished because people are afraid that there's an image and a brand that they need to keep. I was fortunate that when I started building the brand, I built it on the notion of I'm not perfect. So I can get away with a lot of stuff and I can get away with things like I can have full makeup now with a weave, but I can go out in public and do stages with no makeup on and I don't have a brand to, to uphold. So the reaction is really, really positive, but I'm, I'm just Tammy being Tammy. Like people know that, so yeah. And lastly, Tammy, who is the book targeted for and what are you hoping to achieve with this guide? I love this question because I've been asked it a couple of times and I didn't write the book with a target audience in mind. As I said, it was an instruction from God for me to write this book. So the book is for anything that breathes and can read because I think we're all born with an inherent purpose and I think that if you are able to pick up whatever from my book, pick up whatever from my book. Um, it is for anybody who's human, anybody who likes to read, anybody who wants to look for a purpose, anybody who wants to know my secrets, please go read up the book. You'll know all about me. I mean, the only thing I didn't write in there is my bra size, really. Yes. <laughs> Thanks a lot, Tammy. Thank you. That was Tammy Ngadi Meng speaking to Krima Media's Polity about finding purpose.